Salutations, Scoob Believer. Do you have a dream of becoming an entrepreneur, but don't know where to start or even what to do? Where can I gather information quickly about what's in my zone of genius? Don't worry, Scoob Believers. I got you covered. Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt and check out an amazing set of AI prompts that will give you ideas, information, and articles to help you get across that start line. Once again, go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt to get you started now. Good luck, Scoob Believer. To the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! We now join DJ Scoop in the coaching of Josefa, already in progress. Okay, just okay. There we go. I, if I don't record it, I forget about it. That's how how my brain works. So okay. All right. So you've been having some problems looking for just regular work, or are you just trying to look for work in the hotel industry? Yeah, I was looking for work in the hotel industry, and for some reason, uh, not getting anything. So. Uh, my other option was, uh, you know, do something online, maybe work from home kind of thing, where I have uh, freedom with uh, time and money also. So I don't have to, like, you know, go out and, you know, have uh, some a set schedule. Right. Yeah, so something I was wondering if, uh, uh, you know, there are so many options available uh, online in the online space. So maybe you could help me in that. Yeah, what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to take you on a little bit of a trip. What I'm going to do is I want to find out where something is called that your zone of genius is. Have you heard of that before? Yeah. Okay. So, so what I can do good. Yeah, basically what it is, is something that you're good at, that you're experienced at, and that puts you into like a kind of a happy space, happy space in your head. So you can do it like forever and never think it's work. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. You're right. All right. So what I want to do first, I get a little bit of history on what you did in the hotel industry. I know you, you, you have so much experience in the hotel industry. I really think that there is something in there where you could possibly make something online because of your experience in the hotel industry. Cause you weren't in it 30 years because it was hard work. You were in it for 30 years because you really loved the work. Does that make sense? Correct. Yes. So give me a little history about where you came from in the hotel industry and uh, what you actually did there to get to where you are to, well, where you were today. Well, so I started uh, off with the uh, uh, five star hotel in Pune, that is the Blue Diamond, mm -hmm. and uh, I started working as a uh, you know captain in the restaurant, and from there I moved up the ranks, uh, became a restaurant manager, banquet manager, uh, handling functions. Then I moved to different hotels like. Uh, uh, the Obroys in Saudi Arabia. I was in Jeddah for four years. So I was there as a food and beverage manager. Okay. And uh, when I came back to Pune, I was with the Meridian. And I was handling the events and uh, conferences and conventions. Okay. So uh, my uh, plus point is uh, uh, managing events and conventions and conferences 
and weddings. I must have managed uh, maybe th- 10,000 weddings till now. Oh, nice. I, I know y'all's weddings are pretty extravagant. I've seen them on TV. Yes, uh, <laughs> India is famous for big fat Indian wedding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's awesome. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, my my uh, good point in hotels is uh, the banquets department, mm-hmm. where I spend most of the time, and uh, you know I like to meet a lot of new people, and uh, in the in the banquets in in five star hotels, only the rich and famous can give parties in five star hotels. Okay, so I was I was in touch with all the cream uh, cream de la cream. And uh, it is a it's a good thing to understand their needs and their uh, requirements for the function, and then uh, you know get the entire team to uh, achieve and implement, and so that the guest is satisfied. So that is what I've been doing in hotels mainly. Okay. So you were. Um... The restaurant manager, basically food and beverage manager. Manager, um, you took, you did weddings, you did ba- banquets, things of that nature. Of all those jobs that you've had so far to this point, which one do you think gave you the most pleasure? Which one th- gave you the most happiness to actually do? Yeah, the most pleasure was the banquets department. Banquets, okay. Yeah, because I spent most of the time in banquets in the hotel industry. What what about it really made you happy? What I mean, I, there's a lot that happens in these banquets and whatnot. Was it? I mean, what was the different things, parts that actually made you happy? Say, this is why I want to do banquets. Uh, well, uh, manage large functions, and uh, you know, managing large functions is challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be around thousand people, two thousand people, or maybe more than that. So one is the scale of the number of people. And uh, the other is, uh, if it is a smaller function, maybe for 10 people or 20 people, then the uh, standard of the people is extremely high. So they are directors and chairman and, you know, the president and owner of the companies. So to make sure that they are comfortable and uh, Give them what they want before they ask for it. Right, right. Now, um, I don't know if, I don't think I told you this or not. I'm actually a server in a restaurant uh, okay. during the daytime. So okay. I understand where you're coming from when it, when you say, you know, give the guest, you know, before they even know they want it, that's what they need. Because you have the experience to know that they're looking for that refo or they're looking for that little extra something to make their experience pleasurable. So I, I yeah. understand exactly where you're coming from when it comes to that. So, cause I have uh, about 15 years experience in serving myself. Oh, I see. Great. Yeah. So we so, are from the same industry. Basically. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Great. So, you know, we have a good connection there. So I, I really understand where you're coming from here. So okay. what can you actually do? You think, with the, I, I I really feel that something in in the realm of the banquets is something that you can accomplish, um, on your own, not necessarily need a company, but something that you can put together for yourself because that seems to be the thing that you like the most. I mean, do you have any ideas possibly of a way that you can actually make money putting together banquets or something along those lines? Oh, well, maybe uh, start an event company or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, just say, well, what is the issue right now? Is there are so many event companies already. And uh, th- because that is also something which I've checked. Okay. Why do you say that? I mean, what what's making you say there's too many companies? I mean, you checked, but I mean, what? why is this an issue? Well, uh, the, is, the, is, the issue is uh, that there are already many companies in the market mm-hmm. providing this event event management companies. So, you know, that is a kind of a saturation point. 
So, you know, what's funny is I find personally, now this is just me, but I find a market saturation actually is a good thing. Market, okay. market saturation is a good thing because you know for a fact that it's a good market because everybody's doing it. If it was a bad market, nobody would be doing it, right? Right. So it's a viable market. Okay. Just because there's a lot of people doing it doesn't mean it's going to be bad for you. It just means there's a lot of people doing it. But there's one thing that you have that nobody else has in that market. You know what that is? Yes. What is it? My experience. Yes. You. There is no other marketing company. There is no other banquet more company out there that has you. When you are making a company of any kind, not just banquet, but any kind at all, you are the one that makes the difference between whether somebody wants to work with you or not with you because somebody will like you for you. Right? Right. They they like you. So for example, like say you start just I'm gonna throw this out there. If you start a banquet company, you get one or two people to go with you. You get those people to say to the rest of the friends, hey, he did a really good job. Because he did a really good job. You should go see him. Now people are coming to see you for you, not for everybody else. And sometimes Sorry. you could actually charge more for that because they want to come just to you and work for you, work with you and your company, whatever that ends up being. So don't let okay. don't let market saturation deter you for something that you really love to do. Okay. Uh, but what I was thinking, Jesse, is and now again, events, as I mentioned to you, uh, there is no trade of time and money. What I was looking at is uh, something work from home kind of thing. Maybe related to my industry or not related to my industry, but uh, which I need freedom of time and money. That is mo most important. Okay, so, so I don't want to. I don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a slave. Well, nobody wants. Because... Yeah, nobody wants that. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants that. Correct. <laughs> so as far as possible. I was looking at avenues uh, on uh, on the online space, if maybe connected to hotels or uh, not even connected to hotels, something, some else, something else, because there are so many things happening online. Right. A lot of things are being promoted online and, uh, you know, products and we hear a lot of things, but I've never done any work online. Okay. So just so you know up front, especially when you're starting your first, I call them entrepreneur adventure. When you, is yes, what I yes, call it business. Yes, yes. When right. you first start an entrepreneur adventure, there's not going to be a whole lot of freedom and there's not going to be a whole lot of money right up front. I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you right now. Got it's going to take a little time to build. Uh, I mean, you're not going to have your first client and make, you know, $10,000, $20,000 right up front, right? I mean, that. Yeah, it's it's just the way. No, it no, is. I, I, I'm I'm okay with less okay. money to start with. <laughs> but I, even if I even if I make fifty dollars a day, that's good enough. Okay, so let let me change this around a little bit for you then, but still be in the same realm that you're talking about, and then maybe later on you can actually have your own uh, banquet company. But for now. You have experience. How can you help other people with your experience? Is there any way you think you can help somebody else with your experience? Yes, maybe I can uh, take training courses. Make tra Take training courses or make training courses? Make and take. There you go. Why? Because uh, I was also a senior faculty at the Red Carpet Hotel Academy for five years. Okay. What do you think you could so do with that? What do you think? You so can do? Go ahead. Go, go, go. So I was teaching food and beverage and conference and banqueting. Okay. You were teaching that? Yes. For five years. Who were you teaching? The students. Do you think other people might be interested in learning that same experience with you? Uh, not necessarily because uh, hotel management, colleges, uh, it is always 
preferable that they are physical classes, not online classes. So in, there... in, hotel ma- in hotel management, uh, uh-huh. the course which is designed, you have to physically attend the college. You, you, online cl- classes may not help. Have you seen any online courses at all? You know, no, I've not seen any online courses, but I've seen a lot of YouTube videos. Okay, what are they showing you in the YouTube videos? So YouTube videos are basically something which, uh, you know, they can um, help you to support whatever you have learned in colleges. So what if some, you... some, extra, some extra knowledge. Okay, okay. What if you could produce some of that extra knowledge? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So, but I've never I've never made a video before in my life. You're making one right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I yes. mean, this is technically this is how easy it can be for you. It's just yeah. you know, interacting. Correct. Right? Making it right. you don't have to have lights and confetti and all this other stuff to put out just something that that you can teach somebody. Yeah. Like, right. you see where I'm at right now? This is my logo, right? Okay. This is okay. where I do all my YouTube videos. Just like all this. Right. right? This is where I do all my interviews for my podcast and I videotape my podcast and then I put the videos on YouTube. So simple and sweet. Simple and sweet, right to the point. Doesn't have to be very flashy at first, but when things start moving for you and going for you, then you could start investing in some nicer lights and and better equipment and things like that. I mean, I got this is my microphone. This this cost me less than a hundred bucks, right? Okay. The, the camera that I have cost me thirty dollars. Okay. Right. The barrier to entry into these things are very inexpensive and very easy and. People will understand that when you're first starting, as long as you set that expectation that, hey, I'm just getting started, it's not going to look good, but I have some great information for you to learn from. Correct. People will understand that. Right, right. So I think with the experience that you have, you might be able to put together something online that you can make a reputation for yourself as a teacher teaching different aspects of the hotel industry. Right. Um, And then what you could do is what I'm doing right now is put together a course online and then sell that course. Okay. So what I'm saying is using your experience that you have here. Right. Right. I have 30 years worth of experience. That's that's a lot. Not everybody Correct. can say that. So using that experience to your advantage to be able to teach other people to do something similar to what you were doing, people are going to want yes. that. Okay. How does that make you feel? Feels good. Yeah. So do you have any ideas of what you, if if you were to, If you were to put together, you know, fear aside, we're not going to worry about fear right now, okay? Because I know it's scary. Right. But fear aside, what would you put together? What class would you, can you kind of put together a class for me right now, what you would teach with your experience? Yes, because uh, I can teach uh, foreign beverage service uh, to set, to plan a menu. How you should plan a menu, how you should lay down the table, how should you uh, fold a napkin. There you go. And uh, the entire uh, service, service sequence. That is as far as the restaurant service is concerned. Okay. And then banqueting, there are so many aspects like talking to the guest, negotiating the rates, presenting the menu, discussing the menu with the chef and the guest. And then the the setup, what okay. kind of setup they want. If it's a conference setup or it's a wedding setup or if it is a, some exhibition setup. You know, everything which is in mice. 
So there are lot of lot of uh, finer details to be done uh, before the function is ready, mm -hmm. and uh, means there are checklists before the function, during the function, and after the function. Good. Good. Hang on, let me click that up. Okay, so you have an idea of what you can actually uh, teach people. Yes. Right? Now, where would you put that information? Where would you put that? After you make the video, where do you put it? Oh, where should I put it? Okay. I <laughs> will. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you're going to know the answer to that question. So I just wanted to, I did, I'm just kind of exploring with you a little bit. So there's two places I would put those, those videos when we're done, done with them. I would put some of them on YouTube. Okay. And I would put some of them and some of the more in depth experienced ones and in, in a, in a course. So what you would do is use the YouTube to gather a community of people that are interested in learning those things. Okay. And then take that community and sell them your course. Okay. So like once you get, to, I guarantee you with the, your experience and your niche is really, really good to where people were going to want to learn that stuff all over the place, just like everybody else, but they're going to want to learn okay. it, from, but they're going to want to learn it from you. Right. Okay. So those people that want to learn something from you will start following you on YouTube. All or right. Wherever else that you know that you can do it. And then somewhere along the line, when you have a, a course ready to sell in the in the YouTube video or where else you say, Hey, I have a course. If you want this information more in depth, if you want really good information more about what I'm talking about here, go to my course. Okay. So you see how that, that transitions from what you're kind of learning here into something more in depth that people would be willing to pay for. Correct. Okay. So what do you think of that? I mean, I, I know that's kind of a combination of both of our ideas, but this is, this, this is your idea ultimately, right? Correct. Okay. So, uh, Jesse, what I do, uh, what, what is your specialty in, uh, means uh, you are a server in the daytime, you said. Yeah. And, uh, and the, and the evening times you, uh, make videos and, uh, you conduct uh, coaching. Okay. So <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. So during the daytime, I work inside of a hospital. Okay. Then at nighttime, I work as a server in the restaurant. Okay. But. Uh, on Sunday mornings and Tuesday nights, he, Tuesday here anyway, um, I do podcasting and coaching. Okay. So I'm, I'm like, I'm still like in that kind of spot where I'm just about ready to start moving over to doing something full time as far as like my podcast and coaching, which is really a want where I want to go okay. and start moving away from the hospital job, the server job, because this is really where my zone of genius is, is helping other people like you. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? So eventually, you know, I'll find ways to be able to do things, do this more often than the other. And then, and it's going to be good. It's going to be similar to what I'm talking to you about too. I do have some YouTube videos up right now, mainly for my podcast, but I will be do, putting some information there too. I am making a course to talk about how to start an entrepreneur adventure once you have once you have an idea of what to do for your entrepreneur adventure. You're actually before even that right now. You're actually just getting ideas of what to do for your entrepreneur adventure. So um, you're kind of before that right now. <laughs> Glad. <laughs> but um, so I'm working on courses for myself too, and I'm trying to gain a reputation as a an entrepreneur or coach to help people start businesses. Okay. So that's kind of why I wanted to bring you here today is to help you start an entrepreneur adventure for yourself instead of trying to go out and work nine to five or whatever hours that you have at, a, at something you're working at 30 years. With, you're done with that. It sounds like you're done with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're right. So you're right. With your life's experience, 
as what you need to use to, to do your entrepreneurial venture. Because I really feel that something in this particular industry is your zone of genius. You just need to find it. Yes. So um, what I can do for you is there's a book called The Big Leap. The Big Leap. Yes. I just noted it all. And The Big Leap goes into how to find your zone of genius and how to uh, live with the life of abundance. Okay. Okay. So that is a book I always suggest to anybody at any time, anywhere that's in a situation like yours, because I read that book and it changed my life. Okay. So that would definitely be something that uh, I would do for, for you. Um, it's available in, on my uh, online store if you ever want to find it real quickly, which is perfectly right. fine. Um, okay. So, all right. So uh, this uh, YouTube videos that you were mentioning, Jesse, so how do I start making the YouTube video? I've never made any YouTube videos. Okay. But, so uh, do I go on the YouTube and start talking? or Is that making a video or something? Or there is a procedure? So there's a couple ways to do it. As long as you have a way to record a video, you have a way to put something on YouTube. It, the YouTube algorithm just does the conversions for you to, for it to fit onto YouTube. So for example, here's what I do. I go on Zoom just like we're on right now, and right. that records just like we're recording right now. Right. When my recording's done, it will convert it into a MP4, which okay. is a video uh, format. Then you okay. put that video format into YouTube. You just drag it over into YouTube, and boom, it's on YouTube. It's very simple. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So um, it's just a matter of you know doing the recording like this, and what I do is just so I don't, because I'm not very technically savvy. You know, I'm not very good with computers. Um, I uh, click on the, it'll pop up and I'll have like the audio and the video of what you've just recorded. I will okay. move the video over onto the desktop of the computer. Okay. And then I will go into YouTube and it'll ask me to download and I'll, I can look into my desktop right there and just Double click on that and it'll drop it right into, I think you could even just drag it right into YouTube, really. Okay. 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 So now you could do videos just like we're doing now and put it right into YouTube. Now you might want to consider editing it. Okay. Okay. That way um, you can make it look at least a little bit good and you don't have a whole lot of ahs and, ooh, and what the heck am I talking about kind of thing. And you don't want to do too much scripting either because then you sound like a robot. Right. Right. You want to sound personal. You want to be able to sound like you're actually talking to the person that's that's watching. The natural. Exactly. Exactly. So being able to edit the, the things that are a little bit awkward will make it a lot easier for people to consume because it's not, you know, it's easier to see that you're actually talking like we're talking now. So Correct. there is uh, there's a lot of editing uh, programs out there. Um, I use one called a uh, Descript. 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 D e s c r i p t. Okay. And, and if you want, I'll send you the link to that. I have a an affiliate link for that, so you can just pop on there, and it actually gives you some time for free to play with it. Okay. Okay. So you can see if that works okay. for you. And yeah, thanks. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to use Descript, and I think they even have some videos in the program itself of how to use it. So it actually has a few functions. It has a function to be able to edit video. It has a function okay. to be able to um, to uh, edit audio at the same time. And it has a function to, to transcript at the same, and it does all three of those things at the same time. Okay. So it's a big time saver for me. So what I'll do is I'll use that I'll edit for my YouTube video and then I'll edit for like a, um, I can do a TikTok video or a, a news, a, uh, Instagram reel. If I want to, I could do all that all at once. All right. So Descript is really a great tool to be able to t save time and be able to put out a decent quality video to get started. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That I will just check it out. Yeah. Just check it out. 
Um, I'll send you the affiliate link for that. So you can just take a look at that and see how. Okay, so making the videos is one thing that maybe that could be done. Uh, the other thing is, uh, do you have any idea about any kind of work that can be done online immediately? I and mean, I can have some uh, dollars coming my way. Maybe with the experience I have got, or maybe not, or maybe a little bit of training in that field. You can, I think that you could actually even just go put together an email address and just go real skinny mini on just teaching people in public or teaching people like, pay me $50, I'll show you how to do blank. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you can actually even tout services at teaching services at the hotels. Do you still have a lot of uh, a lot of contacts and whatnot in these hotels that you used to work at? Yeah, but in these hotels that I have worked, uh, just say there, there are already training managers who are inside the hotel, so they already have that whole setup. I'm just trying to think of something that you could teach them that they wouldn't normally do. I mean. With your experience, I don't know. Because in the, in these hotels like Marriott and, uh, you know, all these um, la large uh, five-star hotel chains, the entire setup is already there. How do they teach you? Uh, where? No, how? How do they teach you? In the hotels? Yes. Well, they uh, they have a training manager, and then they conduct a uh, uh, train the trainer course. Is that something and you? Your, is that something you can? Let's see. I'm trying to think of a way where you can use your contacts because with 30 years in the business, you got to have some people that you know. I would. You know what I would do? Uh, let's see. Let me think here for a second. I would just start asking questions. Not necessarily okay. looking for work, but start asking questions. What do you think I can do? Is there something different that's different? Start using these contacts you've been putting together for the last 30 years to your advantage and start asking them questions. It's not like you're going to lose your job over, over asking questions because you don't work with them anymore. Right? Right. Right. So I would start sending emails i would start sending this is it's hard to just make money online without it being really kind of slimy or scammy or like you know stuffing envelopes and you never get paid and that kind of thing that's really difficult to do online unless you're actually building your own product okay so i mean the, I think the only real problem I have is knowing what your what it's like for y'all down in India. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. The hotel yes. industry is gonna be a lot different here than it is in India. So I'm I'm kinda going in this blind. So you're gonna have to lead me a little bit because I'm not exactly sure if I'm, you know, going the right direction with you or not, because I'm not sure about how India works when it comes to the hotel industry. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'd rather just be honest with you about it, you know? Right. But what I, I think asking questions of people that are in the industry now and asking them what their pain points are, why something's not working for them, why something is working for them, find out what their struggles are. Hey, maybe there's a way I can help and then start selling help. Once you find out what their pain points are, then you can start building something for yourself that you can sell because they're having a problem. When you find that problem, that's when you know you got something to work with. Right. So, I mean, in your 30 years, do you think there's any current problems that they have in the industry that you might be able to help with? Basically, to skill, get skilled labor. To get skilled labor? Yes. Okay. So how would you get skilled labor? Yeah, I can teach them then. 
So maybe you can do something like I can help you get skilled, get skilled labor, or I can help you. I can, I mean, I, that's something to work with. I think that's something you can work with. Yeah, because that, that is the main issue to get skilled labor. Do you know why they have a rough time getting skilled labor? Because uh, nowadays, uh, hotel management, uh, and, you know, the, this, the today's kids, they don't want to work so many hours in hotels. Because the you know, hotel uh, job is like uh, no end time. When you go in the morning, you, you don't know what time you're going to come back home. Oh, boy, I know that job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I so, used to. I used to have jobs like that all the time. So, the hotel management uh, the courses and nowadays are not very popular. But still, hotels need staff to mm -hmm. function in the hotel. And do you think you can do that? Yeah, maybe I can do that. You You maybe can do that or you can do that? I can do that. that. That's better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that is also one option. Right. So I think the, the best way is for you to find a way to take these pain points that you already know that the hotel has and work with that. And like I said before, it's not going to be money right away, but if you work it right and you understand what the pain points are, People are going to be more apt to work with you if you already know what the answer is to their question before they know that what the question is, right? right. Just, just, right. Like when, just like when you're talking about earlier, when you're talking about the, the guest wanting something and you know that the guest wants something before they even know they want it. That's the same kind of mentality you got to have when you're working with these other people, with you working those hotels. You got to know what their pain points are. And if you know what their pain points are before they know, then they're going to assume that you know the answer to their pain points. Right, you're right. And then we can target them. Then we can target those pain points. And I think you have enough experience in the hotel industry to be able to target those pain points and make a difference in what their bottom line can be. Because what they're gonna what they're gonna want to know is how much money you're gonna be able to make them. Right? Ultimately in the right. end, they're gonna want to know how much you can help them, how much money you're gonna make them. If you keep that in the back of your mind while you're pitching, while you're doing things like say, hey, I can make this pain point go away and you're going to you're going to improve this, this and this and make more money here. If you can figure that out, you have a gold mine. Yes. So I have to figure that out. That's that's the kind of the kicker is to figure it out. But I really think you have it figured out already. OK. I really do. You have you have enough you have enough experience here and you've already come up with a couple ideas on your own to to I think be able to come up with something that you can do and probably do pretty quickly if if you if you get right to work on it. Yes. Do you have any uh, any other ideas? Any other questions you want? We still have about uh, about an hour. If you really want to get into something deeper, I'm good with that. If you feel like you've got enough information, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to feed you the fire hose either. Where you get so much information, it's overwhelming. So I don't want to do that to you either. Yes, but um, so yeah. So Jesse, well, I mean, uh, if you have something to tell me. From your experience, from your, because you are from a different country and maybe uh, there are a lot of opportunities and, you know, something, something new. Something new. Well, I think the thing about doing online work is a lot of that stuff could be, is worldwide. So yes. even though, even though you're in India, you can sell courses to the world. Correct. So uh, online you can sell anywhere. Right, exactly. So that's why I'm saying finding a way to gather people to to that are interested in what you're doing and what your experience is and selling that as a product. Like I said, an online course, some YouTube videos, things of that nature, I think would be beneficial. Now, eventually, 
what you're going to want to do is put something called together called an email list. Okay. All right. Now, what, what's going to happen is you're going to start gathering followers. You're going to start gathering people by making a list of their emails. So you can start with your friends. You can start with coworkers or your former coworkers, anything like that. And just start sending out little bits of information, little bits of, um, of, a, of knowledge about your industry. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It could just be a couple lines. A lot of people are busy, so they don't have time to read three, four, five, six pages of anything. Just something. What is your, uh, what is your opinion about LinkedIn? LinkedIn is probably going to be really good for you. If you can get on LinkedIn and get a good following on LinkedIn, that's probably going to be your best bet because that's where a lot of people that are in your industry are. Right. So putting together a good link. Do you have a LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. And I think, last couple of days, I've been writing one-liners. Good. Good. You want to start providing as much knowledge as you can for other people to absorb. Because LinkedIn is, uh, you know, there is a reputation for LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's thoroughly professional. And I really think that's, uh, that's where a lot of your industry is going to be is on LinkedIn. That's where a lot of the people that are going to be in your niche, in your following, anything. I really think you're going to be LinkedIn. I mean, more than, more than say, Facebook, more than Twitter, you know, and that kind of thing. I think a lot of the people that are in your industry are going to be on LinkedIn. Yes, you're right. So if you can work on your LinkedIn a little bit, even if it's just a little bit every day where you just put like one thing out, maybe, um, maybe start a LinkedIn group, right, of hotel managers. Okay. So like, you know, you know about LinkedIn groups, right? Yes. So what, what you can do is actually start a LinkedIn group and start with just people that you know, start with your contacts that you know, the, the hotel managers that are your friends, contact with them, um, follow them, they'll follow you. Um, and then start working with friends, people that are in the same industry as you, that you're friends with, get them on your LinkedIn. And then what's going to happen is people will link. That's what they call LinkedIn, right? People will link yes. them to their contacts will link them. Then that'll link to you. Right. And then yes. they'll start seeing that you're providing this information and now you're building a community, right? Correct. Right. So, and then starting a, a dedicated LinkedIn uh, group to Correct. hotel management, but, uh, you know, I'll let you make the decision on how to put that group together, but putting that okay. group together and start adding people to this group. Once you start getting a, possibly a couple hundred people in there, every once in a while you could slide in, uh, you know, Hey, I'm, I have this course or, Hey, I have this information or give me your email list and I'll give you a 10 minute video, on how to fold a napkin. Okay. You know, <laughs> whatever, right. As long as you give them something to, to, uh, for them to give you a, something of value so that they will give you your, their email address, then you can start building that email list. Yes. And, and then once you start made building that email list, you can actually start providing information and, uh, and things on that email list. And then you can start putting them into, um, ask them. In this email, ask them, hey, what are your pain points? What can I help you with? What can I teach you? What's in, what information do you think would help you in your journey in the hotel industry? And now you could find ways to get other people's pain points. Right. And use that information to build something that they will be interested in. They go, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm having problems with that. I could really use that. Okay. You see what I'm saying there? Now, this isn't going to, and like I said before, I, just, I keep reiterating, it's not going to be an overnight thing, but it's definitely something that you can work on at the to same time. With- yeah, to start with. Why are you doing that? Educate yourself about, always educate yourself. Complete, always educate yourself about what you're doing, about entrepreneurship and how it works and that kind of thing. Listen to audio books like I do. I listen to audio books eight hours just about every day because when I'm working at the hospital, Nobody talks to me. I carry trash around all day. 
So I put an okay. earbud in and I listen to audiobooks and podcasts about entrepreneurship. Okay. And I think you could do the same thing. Okay. Well, not exactly the same thing. I mean, not, you're not walking around listening to a book eight hours a day. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, right? I mean, it's, yes, you're, you're listening, you're learning, you're educating yourself about in the hospital and the hospital in the daytime. What do you do? Trash. Okay. So it, it's not extravagant, but it's necessary, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an extremely important job. Yeah. So, and the reason I like it though, is because nobody bothers me and I could put something in my ear and learn at the same time I'm taking trash around. It's very simple. Okay. So that's where I get a lot of my experience from that. And I was a six, I sold cars for 16 years. Okay. So I, the nice. sales, yeah. So sales experience has been in my blood for a really long time. Okay. So a lot of my experience is just personal experience and self-education. So well, that also helps a lot. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's helped me get my podcast started. It's helped me with coaching. It's helped me become who I am today. You would never know this was me two years ago. Two years ago, I'm a whole different person. Okay. But now what that I, yeah. What's that? What were you two years before? I was a very sad, depressed man. Okay. Why? Oh, wait a minute. Am I supposed to be you asking the questions or are you asking me the questions? How's it? No. <laughs> well, what's what it is? Because I had no drive. I had no, I had nothing to look forward to. It was go to work, go home, go work, go to home. It, it was very depressing. Um, and all I was doing is working hard to make a couple dollars. And it was, it, okay. I had no, my whole life has been about helping other people. When I was little, I was the little boy that would open the door for the old lady. I was an, I was an Eagle Scout, Boy Scout, because I would help other people. I was the leader in the Boy Scouts for two years after that, because I was always about help, helping other people. So now that I found my path and found my okay. capability and my way to help other people like you, I'm a much better okay. person myself because I feel better about myself because I'm able to help other people. Right. So that's and why I'm, 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 I'm grateful that you are you're giving your time to the week. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, I'll, I'll worry about the money later, you know? Yes. Yeah. When I help enough it's people, all, it's, it's all about building relationships. Exactly. When I help other people, eventually they'll help me back in one way, shape, or form. So that's yes. Cool. That's really what it's all about for me. Yeah. So. So uh, yes, of course, uh, I will uh, go through this uh, book, Big Leap. Yes. And uh, let me just uh, work it out in my mind about these videos and LinkedIn. And I will definitely be keeping in touch with you. And I will be, now you are my uh, partner for life. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, if you feel that I've provided you enough information and something to go on and you really feel good about what we talked about today, um, if you would mind writing me just a little, um, little thing so, saying, hey, I, you know, Jesse helped me with this, this, and this. And I, you know, it would help me because people will realize that I'm the real, I'm a real person and I help other people and I have helped other people. I will, I will most surely do that. Okay. Now, um, so if, where do I send you the written note on your messenger? Um, I will send you my email address. Okay. Fine. And okay. that way you could send it there and then I could just, I could just pull it off of there and that'd be great. Sure, sure. But definitely, I will endorse you. Right. Now, is there anything else that you want to go over? Any other questions you might have? Um, anything else that I can do to help you? Uh, well, currently, I can't think of anything right now. But okay. as, and when, as and when something comes up, I will be in touch with you on Messenger. Okay, that sounds good. So let me, let me ask you this final question, okay? What's the one thing you're going to do as soon as you get off the phone with me here? What's the one thing you want to do that as soon as you get off the video with me, I'm going to go do this. What is it? I will go on the LinkedIn first. Okay, good. And what are you going to do there? Start writing uh, whatever I know. Okay. Don't, don't spill it out all in one night, okay? I mean, no, no, spread no, it out I a little bit. And I will give, uh, I will start with few bullets. Now, 
what I'd like to do with you, if you don't mind, is in a month's time, I want to actually have another call with you just like this, okay? Okay. I want to see how you're doing. I want to see what you've actually accomplished from what we've talked about when it comes to like the LinkedIn, possibly a video or two. I just want to see progress. Right, right. All right. So you have a month to come up with a couple of things to tell me about the next time we talk. Sure. I, I hope I have some good things to tell you about. Oh, I know you will. I know you will. I, I mean, I could see it. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. After, after that call, if you want to continue having monthly calls, we'll talk about arrangements, okay? Sure, sure, definitely. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jesse. Absolutely. And have a, you know, well, there is night over there, so I will say good night to you. Yeah, and good morning to you, I guess. Yeah, so thanks. <laughs> All right, take care of yourself, okay? Bye-bye, take care. All right, bye-bye. Regards to your family. Thank you for listening to the coaching edition of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur, brought to you by Doing It Today Coaching. If you want to get across the start line, contact me, DJ Scoob, at doingittodaycoaching at gmail.com. Say the words, do it now, for a free two-hour discovery call to see how I can help you in your entrepreneur adventure. Art and graphics by Elaine Wilson. Audio video by Brian Briggs of Ocean Tree Creative. And hosted by me, DJ Scoob. <laughs> Supported by my Patreon, Brian Briggs. Click links in the show notes below for more information. And always remember, I can, I am, I will, and I'm doing it today. As a worker of two full-time jobs, running a podcast and coaching, every minute counts in my day-to-day. It's hard to be consistent in any of my social medias. And at this point, I cannot hire a social media manager. Pinnacle AI to the rescue! I've been using Pinnacle AI for a couple of weeks now. I've seen big improvements in my outreach and consistency in all my social medias. Do you want to save time and increase your productivity too? Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI for more information. Save yourself time and grow your brand. Try it now and see what it can do for you.